Yeah. This is the breakdown of it. Yeah. And I'll put a link if you're watching this in the future or watching it or listening to it on a podcast, look at the show notes and I'll put a link into this, this uh, what's called the technology transition rule. So you want, can you fill us in on what that actually is? I, I, I think I have an idea, but yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you may know more about it than I do. So I'm going to get a, you at a very <laughs> high level on the technology transition rule is into effect in October of last year. It was the second step, if you will, of the AIM Act. Okay. Um, and what the way I explain that in the classroom is simply this is it's the applications. So if it's a split system, if it's a reach in, if it's a, you know, commercial refrigeration that it will be based on how many pounds are in that refrigerant and, um, and what the GWP is. So they interact with each other as far as that. The way I like to think of that is because I used to teach supermarkets and, and, and larger classes on the commercial refrigeration side prior to coming here at Copeland is the longer the line set, the more opportunity for leaks, the smaller window you will have for refrigerants as far as GWP. So that's a, that's a good part of the, ah. of, the, of the application type thing. That's that. So the smaller that GW or that line set gets, the higher the GWP gets. And I always share that with contractors that only do air conditioning. Actually, uh, we have, you know, we have a better opportunity here with more opportunities, R32, 454B, those kind of things, uh, where other, uh, the larger those line sets, that window starts to close in on you. You know what I mean? So that's my definition. That doesn't get in the weeds of what it is. Uh, you probably have more to add than that, but uh, that's how I see the technical transition is just the, 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 the systems, the way the applications are, how much refrigerant is in the system, whether it's 200 pounds, less than 200 pounds or over 200 pounds, that changes things. If it's o over 200 pounds of commercial refrigeration, the maximum is 150 GWP. If it's lower than 200 pounds, it's less than 300 GWP. We have, so we, we have a 454B for air conditioning. That's less than 700, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a 454A and a 454C. The 454A has a higher GWP, so that will be lower than the 200 pounds. The 454C has a lower GWP, at a, uh, so that'll be the less than 150 pounds. And when I say lower, they're way lower. Like the 454A, for example, is 238, so it's way below that 300. Same components in those refrigerants. It's a 454 series, but that R32 and that uh, 1234YF shift. So it may be a ratio of 80, 20, it may be a ratio of 50, 50, it may be a ratio of 60, 40, but each one of those can fit a different application that based on the pounds and the GWP. So you hit all the marks. We like to refer to it. And I'm going to do a shameless plug is it's as simple as ABC with the 454 series. <laughs> I get it. Marketing's going to love me for that. Tony. I was just going to say, you got that from a marketing guy. I'm sure. <laughs> no, nah, thanks. You actually educated me on a lot of stuff and it's a good segue into this. Uh, next question, and I'm going to pull up a, a slide here. So you tell me, like, here's a question I got from one of our guys. Let me okay. get rid of this overlay here just so we can see it a little bit better. So um, the question was, what about equipment other than commercial HVAC? And you just talked about this, right? Process chillers, refrigeration equipment, grocery store equipment. You know, I, I refer them to this part of the transition guide we just talked about, which has the subsectors in it which is what you were referring to. Like vending machines have a different GWP requirement than package rooftop units and process chillers and water coolers and stuff like that. So if you have a question about something else, one of the other subsectors you can, you can look here, but I didn't know the 150 GWP max was based on the volume of the refrigerant uh, as opposed to like, my thought was, if you could do it, if you could use propane, then okay, you give them a 150 limit, but you're telling me it's actually because of the poundage in the equipment, which yeah. is news to me. So that's good. Yeah. So the propane is a hundred. It's that is uh that's based on grams. Propane is at 150 grams now, R290 and UL passed. It seems like it was yesterday, but it's been some months now uh, to move it to 300, 400, four or uh, 300, 500, pardon me, Tony. 500 mm -hmm. would be cases uh, that don't have doors and drawers on them. So that would be going into your grocery store with open cases where you can reach right in and grab the product. If it has a door or a drawer on it where that gas can be trapped, then it'll be lower milligrams. But that's the R290 propane. That, that's where that 150 grams is maximum right now. Um, but what I'm talking about is the pounds for uh, 
the, uh, the HFOs, the HFO blends and those kind of things. That's 150, uh, less than 150 uh, GWP, not grams, uh, will be on the 200 pound or less. 200 pounds or more, it's 300 GWP uh, or less, basically. So it's based on the larger the charge, the less opportunity of GWPs you have, basically. The more opportunity for leaks is the way I like to explain it. Uh, if you blow the charge, how much GWP is in that refrigerant? So uh, gotcha. the, the less the charge, the, the more opportunities I like to say you have as far as selection of refrigerants, basically. Very good explanation. Thank you. And by the way, that question was by Dennis Millay with our Hobbs, uh, Hobbs office in Maryland. So thank you, Dennis, for providing that question.